Yeah, I'm recording. Okay, good. Okay, just put it out there. All right. Okay, hello, everyone. And uh, let me bring a mic in. Sorry. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to this live lab. My name is Robert Allen. I'm Dr. Marco's producer and co-host today on this lab. And uh, the, the subject of this discussion is the cancerous environment, three things that attract cancer. And uh, good morning, Dr. Marco. Glad to be with you today. Good morning. Glad to be here as well. This, um, this topic is, is one that, that comes up all the time in your office, I know. And as part of full disclosure, I am a, a not only Dr. Marco's producer and co-host, but I am a patient as well. Um, and uh, I've been with Dr. Marco and his partner, Dr. Tim Lyons, for uh, probably four <clears throat> years now. And they've saved me from going under the knife for a full hip replacement, um, feeling great. And actually, my whole family uh, is, uh, is treated by, by Dr. Marco. So, um, where, uh, I always hear this conversation come up, um, while I'm in the office and, and talking about it. Um, people, uh, people need to know this, don't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's cancer is got, it hasn't been going anywhere, you know, it, with all the research that's being done on how to, how to, uh, cure cancer. I mean, we have all these cancer foundations, um, but the missing link is they're, they're trying to figure out how to get rid of the cancer cells. But what we're going to learn today is it's the cancer cell is not the problem. It's the sick person. That's the problem. And until that is addressed, these cancer cells are going to keep developing over and over again. And there's really never going to be a true uh, cure to it unless you address the person themselves. So this seems kind of obvious. To me, at least, why you know why is this something that you know is the complete opposite approach to what's done? For, I, I in think most it's just based on uh, education. You know, me, the medical community, as great as they are, they're taught to treat with medicine. You know, they're tr they're taught to treat with surgeries, and they're trying to find that medicine that's going to stop cancer. They're going or, or they're doing the chemotherapy to kill the cancer, but the problem is. All of us have cancer cells inside inside of us, but our immune systems are strong enough to keep them at bay. But when you have somebody that isn't strong enough with their immune system, they have a sick body, and we're going to learn a, a couple of the environments that we have in our body that is going to attract more cancer. Um, it's going to cause a, a bigger development of cancer in our body, more than just the norm. So we really need to discuss what type of environment does cancer thrive in? Because that's going to tell you what type of lifestyle is going to attract cancer and increase your risk for cancer. Okay, so just in the way we live our lives, we can either be more susceptible to having it develop or less. Is that, is that what you're Absolutely. saying, essentially? We, we're born with the risk of having cancer. Your lifestyle is what's going to drive you closer to that risk or further from that risk. We all have risks of all sickness and disease because it's out there, but it's the terrain in our body that is going to attract sickness and disease, not the sickness and disease trying to come into you. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. So um, should we get started then and, and find out how we can uh, avoid Absolutely. Do you want to let people know that if they have any questions or if they want to join us, they have a no. I don't so. want to. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Absolutely. Um, questions. Uh, we welcome them uh, in the in the chat box. You can um, you can ask your uh, question with a, a slash Q uh, and then space and then your question and it'll come up as a question um, in the box. So I'll be able to uh, to spot that. And uh, if you'd like to join in on the conversation, um, we do have uh, an open seat, so you can uh, you can join us uh, that way um, as well. So um, I know I'm curious to hear um, what I can do to uh, to make sure my body uh, stays out of this cancer environment. So it's all yours. Absolutely. So let's just start with one of the 
environments that your body can be, get into that is going to attract more cancer. The first thing we're going to talk about is an acidic environment. Your body can become acidic based on the foods that you're putting in your body. Some of the most common foods that are going to make that acidic environment is our processed foods, our high carbohydrate diets, our sugars, stuff like that. The more you have that type of stuff in your, in your diet, the more you're going to start to get a more acidic environment. So you can actually test this in your body by getting your pH done by a, by a doctor. Um, the pH, obviously, if it was neutral is seven, anything above seven is considered a, a, a basic environment and anything below seven is considered a acidic environment. So uh, you could actually do that test to find out if you're in that, in, in that range. But um, if you just how think do you about do, How do you do that test? How would someone test that? Um, well, the, the medical doctor would uh, you know, order that test. It, it could be done uh, with urine. It could be done mm -hmm. with stuff like that. Um, but if you just think about the all-American diet that we have, or that most people have, I mean, it, it, it screams, you know, sh uh, carbohydrates, it screams, you know, these, these types of uh, foods that are going to cause more acidity in our body. And your, your, the cancer cells live better in an acidic environment than a non acidic environment. So, you know, trying to clean up that diet and starting to have more, um, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, trying to stay away from the higher carbohydrate like breads and pastas and processed foods, all of that stuff is going to be more acidic to your body. Um, adding in uh, more omega threes from fish and, you know, from fish oils and, you know, you can, you can add in your, your nuts and seeds and all that stuff. I mean, basically it's similar to the anti-inflammatory diet, which I've talked about in the past. So that type of environment is going to really, really attract those cancer cells. And it really comes down to the decisions that we make based on the foods that we're putting in our body. So if you want to have a, a, a more healthier diet, that's going to decrease your risk uh, for cancer. So um, a second environment that these cancer cells are going to live in is they're the opposite of us. So we like oxygenated environments. They do not like oxygenated environments because they can't, they can't live very well in there. So lowered oxygen environments are going to um, attract cancer cells. Now, how could you have a lower oxygen environment? Well, number one, it could be um, you're not getting enough expansion of your lungs to get that oxygen into your body because you have a posture in your body where you slouch forward. Uh, another thing is you're not doing enough cardiovascular training. You know, it's very important to do some cardiovascular training like walking, jogging, running, sports, all that stuff. That's going to give you a stronger, a more efficient heart which is going to get more oxygen to the body. So uh, uh, somebody that may not work out or may have more of a sedentary lifestyle will have that lowered oxygen environment, which could increase the risk of the cancer starting to develop. So now we have a, a, an acidic environment because we're not putting the right foods in our body. Then we have a lowered oxygen environment because we're not uh, exercising enough and strengthening up our heart and, 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 de and decreasing the stress on our lungs from bad posture and stuff like that that's going to decrease that oxygen environment. So now those are the first two. And the third one that I want to quickly briefly go over is, <clears throat> is um, sugar. Sugar is what cancer cells thrive on. They actually need sugar to survive. So the more sugar that we have in our diet, the more you're going to start to attract those cells. And, and I don't mean sugar by just saying, you know, taking, you know, table sugar and putting it in a drink. I mean, everything that we eat turns into glucose in our body, which is the sugar. So when you have these diets and it matches with the acidity area of the diet, um, when you have these diets that are higher in carbohydrates, um, bad carbohydrates, because there are good carbohydrates, but high in sugar, high in, in um, bread, pasta, all that stuff that's going to increase the risk of cancer because you have all these sugary substances in your body that those cancer cells are going to be like, sweet, give me more, give me more. And, and the more that they have, the more they're going to start to develop more. So 
<clears throat> those are the three main environments that that we're going to discuss today and it really oil all boils down to like we have to change our body because if we don't change the lifestyle and change the terrain of our body those cancer cells are just going to keep developing and and you know it was very interesting you know as you were talking about this the second component mm -hmm. which was um you know oxygen you know an oxygenated environment you know i didn't realize that someone's posture would affect how they how they breathe but that makes mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense if they are you know if they do have bad posture they're not getting those you know yeah, full so, breaths right so we got to think that our lungs are protected by the ribs and the ribs wrap around to the to the mid back so if you have a posture and it's the number one posture that we see going through this uh going in our office is we have this posture where the head starts coming off of the shoulders and then the the shoulders start to round forward i mean and if you even sit here and try to take a deep breath while you're slouched over, you could feel the restriction in those lungs. But as a chiropractor, we want to fix that. So we bring the shoulders back, bring the heads back. Now all of a sudden you could get that full breath and that full breath is going to get more oxygen to the body. And not only is that going to decrease your risk for cancer, but it's going to have your nervous system working more efficiently because that's one of the things your body needs to function well is oxygen. Is it, you know, I, it's, it's interesting you, you talk about that because I was, I, I had the opportunity just recently to kind of observe some people who I know that are a bit older and um, they, their posture was not good at all. Yeah. And I'm wondering, you know, as you're talking about that, is it, do you reach a point where it's, it's too late to correct posture? Uh, no, the only time it's too late to correct posture is if the bones have actually fused together. We would never know that until we saw an x-ray. But um, what you need to do is check your posture when you're at a younger age because um, that's going to get worse over time if it's not corrected. And as the posture starts to slouch more, we start to compress those discs and those vertebrae and they could degenerate that spine. So as long as there isn't fusion of the bones, it could be corrected. But if you've gotten to the point where there's so much stress on that spine that the body decided that, well, if you're not going to fix this, I'm going to take this stress and decrease it by fusing the bones together and not having to have as much stress on there because it's a stronger area. But and ideally, and you want to fix that instead of waiting for the body to just fuse together. Right. And 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 we're talking about the 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 discs in between the vertebrae that are, yeah. are disappearing essentially. Absolutely. Um, yeah, they're, 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 there's only a certain amount of stress that those discs can take. Mm. So if you take that disc and you put a stress on it, now you're coming forward, it starts to go like this. And now this is going to start to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Now you have a disc space that's like this rather than this. Yeah. I, I, I think, I, I think what reacts like the, So the, I'm sorry, the body, um, in response to that, because the body is always in a, in a state of trying to, to heal itself or try to keep itself in balance. Um, in response to that degeneration of the spine, I mean, of the discs, the spine is gonna build, or the bones are gonna build more bone in the area because a bone is stronger than a disc. So it'll be able to uh, withstand that stress better. But it can only do that for so long before it runs out of a disc space, and now it's just bone on bone or close to it. And then it just says, well, I'm going to fuse together. That's how the body naturally does it. Unfortunately, um, before that process occurs, uh, if it's not addressed uh, naturally, then a medical doctor or an orthopedic may fuse that together surgically. To kind of to make sure that no further damage um, happens, Absolutely. right? That's what they're preventing at that point. Mm -hmm. um, another question um, that I had was, you know, when you talk about changing the the environment inside of your mm -hmm. body, whether mm -hmm. it be, you know, alkalinity or, or a high sugar environment, do you see that that things change right away? Like, how long does it take to get your body rebalanced like that? Does it like if you cut out sugar, do those improvements start happening? Do you see that benefit right away? Uh, or, you know, how, what is the, the process like to change over 
from well, your current it's, state. So it's hard to put a time frame to that because every person's body is different. So if you have lived a lifestyle where you've had sugar every day for 30 years, um, if you remove that sugar, is it going to be back to normal in a week? Probably not. So every person, it's hard to put a time frame to it. But when you start to make the decision of removing things that are bad and putting things in our body that are better for us, um, your body has that natural ability to start to heal quickly. Um, I don't know the exact time frame. I wouldn't put a time frame because I wouldn't want to set expectations. But I would say that um, removing those sugars and removing those bad things and then adding in things that are going to be better for us and causing uh, less inflammation and, and, and bringing us up more towards a alkaline uh, uh, diet and then also you know starting to take care of that exercise and the chiropractic. And when all that is put together, now your body's going to start to function better, which is going to improve the entire body, strengthen that immune system, and do the whole you know gambit of things that needs to be done for us to start to attack those cancer cells. Um, a lot of the information that I'm giving right now, uh, I want to I want to offer this to uh, the people in the uh, audience. Is there's a book out there called The Cancer Killers by Dr. Charles Majors. It's one of the best books that you'll ever read when it comes to cancer and trying to kill cancer or beat cancer naturally. Uh, it's amazing. It really goes step by step of, of what uh, foods are going to be best for you, you know, what exercises are going to be best for you. Uh, and, and the person that wrote it, Dr. Charles Majors, has a very interesting story where he had brain cancer and he was told he only had a couple weeks to live. And they told him your choice is to either take the traditional medical route of, of, uh, of chemotherapy and, and we, we hope that we can take care of this or he could go a natural route. And obviously he is a chiropractor himself. He took a natural route and he did some amazing things and we're seven years later and the guy is cancer free and, and, and touring the world talking about uh, how to be a cancer killer and, it, and it's an amazing thing. So. If, if anything you get from this uh, this brief time we have together is check out that book. Yeah, and it, I put it, the it's link. It's life-changing, and you got the link there. Yeah, I put the link in um, in the sidebar so people can go right to, uh, but, right to but, the website. But the bottom line is we have to remember that cancer is just a symptom. I know it sounds like, you know, not as harsh as what people are talking about cancer as, but cancer is just a symptom of the body. It's telling us that our body is not strong enough to fight off the cancer cells. So we have to look in ourselves and take responsibility of our life and say, okay, well, why is my body developing cancer cells? What aspect of my life can I change to make the terrain in my body better that the cancer cells can't survive? That's the moral of the story is it's the sick person that's, that's getting cancer. It's not the cancer cells taking over the sick or taking over the person. Yeah, that's a, it's an interesting way to look at it. And it's not really, you know, mainstream thinking. It's uh, not when you think about cancer. And that's why cancer, if you look at the statistics is only going, it's becoming more of an epidemic and all the research that they're doing and all these great things that they're doing, unfortunately, isn't decreasing your risk or decreasing the uh, amount of cancer that we have in the world today. And it's one of the biggest, you know, uh, unfortunately, I don't want to get grim, but one of the biggest killers in the world is cancer. Yeah, I mean, a day doesn't go by when you don't hear of someone Somebody. who's infected by it. And, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, you know, I, I, I see it in, in just the other work that I do, you know, in creating, you know, video legacies for people with terminal illness. And you know, I've done well over a hundred of these videos. Um, and by and large, most of what is, is uh, affecting these people uh, is cancer. You mm -hmm. know, there are other deadly diseases for sure, but yeah. without a doubt, you know, the majority is uh, people who are suffering from uh, some form of, of cancer. Yeah. Uh, so and, and it's, it's I don't want to say it's never too late, but it's you can actually 
reverse the cancerous uh, process by changing a lot of the things we talked about today. So I was actually reading a story the other day about, um, actually I think Dr. Majors posted this on his Facebook link, but he was talking about a, 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 uh, a 20 year old that ended up getting ovarian cancer mm -hmm. that was ended up being his patient or read his book or something. And she didn't take the traditional route. She took kind of the steps that Dr. Majors was, was uh, recommending. And, you know, after I forget how long it was, you know, it was a couple months later, she was quote unquote cancer free. And guess where she's going to go to school. She's going to school to become a chiropractor, mm -hmm. you know? So, it's amazing how like just one quick life change could, you know, now, and I, and I guarantee that girl when she's done with school is going to be a rock star because she has it inside of her that this changed my life and right. I want to change other people's lives. And, and she's going to be just going through school, like rocking and rolling. And I, I look forward to seeing that person in the future if I ever get the chance. Yeah. I mean, that's, um, that's, you know, when you have someone who has, who is living proof, right? Because you can't, you know, when you, when you see things, you know, like that and, and like Dr. Major's situation where he had multiple brain tumors, right? You know, is it a miracle, right? Was there some superpower that caused, you know, this miracle to happen? I mean, obviously he did some things and changed his lifestyle and the cancer for lack of a better word disappeared and he right? had three large brain tumors that they didn't want to resurgically remove because they were afraid that he wouldn't make it through the surgery that's yeah. how much it was yeah. i mean it, it, he explains it in the book i actually interviewed him uh about six months ago or a year ago i forget how long ago yeah. uh, it's on our youtube channel the chiropractic source on youtube um, there's an interview between me and Dr. Majors and it's really a powerful interview. So, uh, if you want to link that to yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'll, YouTube, I'm gonna pull that up. Mm -hmm. that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was an excellent, um, it was an excellent interview. I mean, I was, I was riveted, um, during it because really, you know, as we said, there's not, there's not one person who hasn't, um, who hasn't been affected um, by cancer, and um, you know, to find out that that it's um, it's not only traditional uh, medicine, you know, that can um, can help someone, mm -hmm. you know, but that's that's all we hear about. That's yeah. really all we hear about. So, and, and, and a great thing that from his book that he spoke about is he's not telling you not to do the chemotherapy if that's the, the way that you want to do it. He's right. just saying, make sure that your body is strong enough and ready to take that chemotherapy in. And there's right. actually a, a test that you can do to find out if the specific chemotherapy that they're going to be giving you is good for the cancer that you have. Um, I'm not exactly sure the name of the testing, you know, it's in his book. But you can actually go as far as saying, all right, well, I do want to go the chemotherapy route. I don't feel comfortable doing it without that. But let me find out, is, is the chemotherapy that they're going to be doing to me going to attack the, the cancer cells that I specifically have in my body? You know, so he's not all about like anti-chemo, anti-surgery. Like if that's what you have to do, you go, you, you go ahead and do it. But the moral of his story, like I said, is you have to make sure that you're the strongest that you can be in order to either fight the cancer yourself or to take that medical route and go that way. But you still need to have the strong body to, uh, to accept that. Right. Yeah. That's it. it you know, the environment in which it lives is, is as we've seen, extremely, um, important. Uh, I know we've got a couple of people in, I don't know if anyone wanted to, before we wrap up, wanted to jump in on an open seat or if anyone had uh, a question for Dr. Marco, you can go ahead and and type it uh, to type it in um, uh, on the sidebar, um, and we will uh, address that. Um, okay. While 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 people might be wanting to you know join in, uh, as much as this is this talk is about cancer, I mean you could really put this message 
to any disease and any disorder out there. So we have to have a strong environment in our body in order to fight all of sickness and disease. We're just specifically talking about cancer right now because it's running rampant. But right. um, if you want to decrease your risk for heart disease, you know, the biggest cause to heart disease is chronic inflammation. Right. You know, a lot of people are, are under the impression that it's high cholesterol or and stuff like that. But it's really chronic inflammation in our body that is breaking down the arteries and then the body's trying to repair that, clogging it with what's called plaque. And that is what's really causing the heart disease. So living in an, a lifestyle that's going to be more anti-inflammatory, which is similar to the diet that we were just talking about today and the lifestyle we're talking about today, that's going to decrease your risk for pretty much all sickness and disease. And that's really what health and wellness is all about. It's about setting yourself up to have the strongest body so that you could fight off most sickness and disease. You're already equipped for that. It's just a matter of yeah. whether you are, uh, whether your body is ready to to fight it. Now, is is, you know, can someone sense? I mean, I guess how your how good your immune system is by you know if you get sick very often or or how long it takes you to to recover from you know the the common cold or the flu. Are those indicators of how how strong your immune system is? They're small indicators, but your 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 better indicators is 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 taking a functional blood blood panel. You know, so getting your blood work done by a doctor, whether it's a medical doctor or, or somebody in the more natural uh, health and wellness world, like a a DO or a chiropractor or something like that. Um, there are certain markers that you're going to see if you're showing if you're showing more inflammation in the body. You know, or your 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 immune panel marker might show that there is overactive, you know, aspects of it. Uh, so that's really more of a better way to do it rather than just saying, well, I don't really get sick because all of these things like heart disease, cancer, diabetes, they're all silent. You know, there's no big like, oh, I have cancer now. You know, they're silent developers. Uh, and that's why they're so dangerous because there isn't really a sign or symptom that you have cancer until you have the cancer, you know, diagnosis, or there's no sign or symptom. I mean, there's some sign or symptom for heart disease. I mean, obviously if you start getting the, the pain down the left side, you know, right. you start getting but that. It's not like appendicitis but where, no, you where you're like, Oh my God, it's killing you. Appendicitis, right. So right. that, you know, so it's really like just being regular, regularly monitoring your body. So like, for instance, I said there's a marker that, that's great for chronic inflammation. So uh, C-reactive protein, it's called CRP. That's something that people can use. If, if CRP is high, you have a risk for you know, these diseases. Uh, homocysteine is another thing that people can look at. Homocysteine, if it's high, can also show that there's chronic inflammation. When you look at the immune panel, which is your white blood cells and uh, the breakdown of those white blood cells, if you have uh, a high count of white blood cells, you may be having an active an active attack on your immune system, or your immune system may be attacking something. And then you look at those each of those markers, and it'll tell you which one is higher or lower, and give you a risk. Okay, this one might be more bacterial versus this one might be more viral versus this one is just a more of a chronic inflammation style thing. So a blood test is one of the best things you could possibly do to yourself for yourself. I'm sorry. Now. Two things about that, because I know that um, you looked at my blood work, mm -hmm. um, and and first thing is you look at as as a chiropractor in your philosophy, you look at blood work a little bit differently than a medical doctor might look at it mm -hmm. in terms of what you call a functional range, mm -hmm. is that right? Um, and then one of the other things that we discussed was vitamin D. Mm -hmm. And I was extremely deficient in vitamin yes. D, like so vitamin dangerously D, deficient. Yeah, so vitamin D is extremely important for immune function. So the lower that you have a vitamin D level, the higher risk you have for having a lowered immune system and not being able to fight sickness and disease. So, so when you get uh, your vitamin D checked uh, by a blood work, you want to have that range to be between 35 to 80 to 100. But if you're below 35 or even close to 35, that's too low. You want to be more closer to 
60 to 100. Because when you're in the range of 35, you're actually just decreasing your risk for vitamin D deficiency disorders, like rickets and stuff like that. Um, if you are in the higher range, you're decreasing your risk for diabetes. You're de decreasing your risk for cancer. You're decreasing your risk for heart disease. You're decreasing your risk for most sickness and disease when you're in those higher ranges. So as much as they say you should be between 35 and 80, I want to really go closer to say you should probably be between 60 to 80 or even a little bit higher. Okay, so and vitamin talk about, D is extremely important. And, and, and talk about why you have a narrower range when you look at blood work. Absolutely. So when you get a medical doctor, the medical community look at your blood work, they have a broad range for what, what certain uh, markers should be. So that broad range, how they figured that out is they tested a bunch of sick people in a certain area and they found out if you're in this range, you're sick. If you're not in that range, you're considered not sick or healthy. Um, the range that we use in our office and uh, it's basically called the functional lab values that range is shortened and the way they figured out that range is they found out what is the healthiest people or the most healthiest people we could find what is their range their range is here well if you're on the outskirts of that range you're not specifically at disease but your function is low so we're getting towards disease and then those disease markers that the medical community use, that's when you really have gotten so much breakdown of the body. So, and doing functional lab testing is going to catch stuff before it gets to the point of you're at that sickness and disease. Yeah. And, big and it difference. was, yeah, big difference. And, um, uh, you know, I know just from my own experience, you know, and talking about how to move those, those results, um, you know, I, back in April, I, I, changed my nutrition and and within two months um i saw significant differences in in my blood work all in the right direction and and was very encouraged and that was one of the reasons that you know it's kept me on track because it really you know what, what you put into your body really you know affects how how it reacts to the environment yeah. you know i mean it's and, and it's un it's unfortunate that the uh, medical community isn't under the impression that you can become healthier by changing your diet. If they're not taught it in school, they they have very little nutritional education at school. A lot of their school is based on pharmacology. You know, what type of drug is going to help what type of symptom? And right. there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a different style of education. And a, a more natural approach to health and wellness would decrease the risk for sickness and disease and now you don't need to go that route of medicine but if you are at a point where you need it then you get it right. but it should it should be reversed where you don't go to your medical doctor first you go to say a chiropractor first or somebody that has more natural minded uh recommendations then if that approach doesn't work then to go something more aggressive but unfortunately right. we're not taught that and you know, we have television uh, commercials that are just saying, you know, if you have this system, go try this drug. Tell your doctor about this drug. Like, it's just being force fed to you that the drugs are what's going to keep you healthy. Um, but that's not the reality. It's it's you as the person that's going to keep yourself healthy. It's it's a lifestyle to be healthy. It's harder to be healthy than it is to be sick. People can be sick it, like that because they just have to live the lifestyle they want to live of being lazy eat the foods that are worse for them, don't exercise, have bad relationships, think horribly. It's a lot easier to do that than to say, okay, well, I'm going to start choosing a better choice to put in my body, or I'm going to start working out three to four times a week, or I'm going to start to think positively about my life. You know, those things are a lot, it, it actually takes brain power to do that. So in fact, it's actually easier to be sick than it is to be healthy. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I couldn't agree more. And you see it in so many things. I mean, you just watch television and there are drugs for everything, you know, being advertised. Now, granted, there are some drugs that are treating conditions that, you know, you, you maybe can't correct by changing your lifestyle. But I have to say a lot of them, you know, you can take a high cholesterol medication or you can eat better. Mm -hmm. and and exercise and lower your your bad cholesterol that way 
as yeah. well. And then not have to, because th the thing that strikes me is, you know, the, okay, you see a one minute commercial for a drug and 45 seconds of it is telling you what the side effects are mm -hmm. and what you can expect when you take it, not anything treating the symptom, but causing all of these other mm -hmm. things, including death. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, gosh, you know, how much suffering do you have to be, you know, be enduring mm -hmm. to take something that might kill you? Yeah, it's sad. You know, but. and I just, I don't get it. I really don't get it, you know. Um, but, and, and not when you can, and it's not always easy to change, you know, your diet. Mm -hmm. You know, like anything else, people can be, um, thanks. <laughs> Does she want making her laugh? I'm, I'm noticing. Yeah, I asked if she wanted to jump in. Would she like to come on or no? Yeah. Well, all right. I don't, don't want to push it. She's shy. I'm that's curious. okay. I'm actually curious yeah, what, what you do is through massage to help them. But if she doesn't want to come on, I'm not. That's okay. It. We get it. Um, <laughs> but oh, yeah, you know, okay. I mean, I, okay. Oh. Whenever you're ready. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just I, I've. You know, I've seen, you know, the changes that can can be done with um, nutrition and, you know, going to I mean, I see you two to three times a week. You know, um, I, I sometimes come in with specific pain um, and uh, you let her, and and, you know, you're able to to deal with that. And um, hi, Stephanie. Hello, how are you? Hi, Stephanie. Hello, hello, how are you? Thanks for Excellent. joining us. You guys are sounding so amazingly professional. <laughs> I didn't want to come on and interrupt the flow. But I'm hoping you guys um, repurpose this and use it for like your YouTube channel or something. No, this is yeah. this is real stuff right now. We need to talk about this. No, but I'm saying you should. You should be repurposing and and taking what you guys are talking about and putting it on the YouTube channel because it's good information. Yeah, it will I actually had to think twice. Do I want to come on and really talk about health and disease and cancer, or do I want to like hear some other business thing? Those <laughs> who um, hear about cancer because I actually work with people with cancer, but it's it's like you have to be in the right mind to you know. It's something I'm also learning. It's like I need to not run away from hearing about cancer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> no, I hear you. But so what, so you, you say you treat patients? I, I co-own a wellness center. We do acupuncture, massage, and organic facials. And we also manufacture herbal formulas for pets and people. But um, we also specialize in working with people with cancer. So I was trained to do oncology massage. I, I don't do lymphatic massage. Basically, mm -hmm. I'm just trained to, you know, carefully, you know, figure out what's going on with someone and if they've had any um, biopsies or lymph, you know, uh, stuff, then I just stay away and, you know, do other yeah. things. And uh -huh. stuff. so just to be careful. And, um, but my business partner, who's the acupuncturist, she actually, you know, works with people with neuropathy and nausea and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, <clears throat> we use, we do massage in our office. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I mean, we see some great results with massage. I mean, we, ha we do chiropractic, we're having uh, physical therapy pretty soon. And, you know, we, we, we highly promote acupuncture. I mean, these are all the part of the wellness plan that should be included in everybody's life. Mm -hmm. you know, I and, actually uh, worked for a chiropractor for 18 years wow. in my community, and that's how I met my business partner. She actually was, she rented space in his practice, and then she asked that's me great. one day, when we've been in yeah. business eight years. So is there any difference in massage that you do on somebody that has cancer versus not having cancer? Or is it just kind of the overall... Um, relaxation of the muscles takes stress off the body and and no, allows them to function better well we definitely are trained to just you know if they've had breast cancer you want to not um, you know you just have to be careful with the strokes you know you don't want to go up into the lymph glands or things like that um, we actually are trained with acupressure points for nausea or for digestion I it's interesting. I've been doing massage for 29 years, and when I work with people with cancer, I go into a whole other space. I become like a healer. So I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I just yeah, do. That's good. You know, 
That's excellent. I, but we, we, you know, I, we were trained, you know, doing, being careful with certain things and, um, but not really, uh, I guess you could learn more, but for, for now, I've just learned the basic thing about him. Just, yeah, you know, yeah, but that's people. excellent. Yeah. That's so, I'm, I'm happy for you. You're doing well. Yeah. So. Do you, do you, um, do you market that, that, um, portion of your business? Yeah. Um, well, I do. I do. Of course I do, but not in a big way. I actually have a business coach and um, stuff like that. And so that's why I was telling you guys, you really should repurpose this content because it's really good. Um, that's one of his, you know, Casey, my business coach, big things about uh, always posting and social media and staying in contact with your existing clients you know everyone's always looking for new business you have to learn yeah. how to have relationships with your existing clients you know absolutely so yeah, yeah that's, that's very true but i don't want to keep um i'll go off <laughs> i'm getting shy all <laughs> okay. of a sudden no, that's all right all right so, well thank you for your participation and yeah. keep, keep up the good work Cool. Yeah, right. Where are you located real quick, just to let people know? We are in Pacific Palisades, California. We actually have a website, holisticcancersupport.com uh, is our website. We're uh, Oasis Palisades is the name of our business. We're in Pacific Palisades. I'll put the um, website. Yeah, put it on the sidebar. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So, we're in Pacific Palisades, which is near Santa Monica and Malibu in California. Excellent. Excellent. Cool, cool. All right. All right. I'll put the info in the sidebar and I'll keep listening. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to, I'll add uh, Dr. Marco's uh, YouTube channel Please. Uh, in here as well, because we've done a bunch of, uh, a bunch of videos. Um, Actually, I want to know what you're talking about so that I, you know, that's why I popped on and stayed listening because mm -hmm. whatever you're teaching, I would like to know so I can actually tell my people, you mm -hmm. know, so I'd like to hear more, and and so yeah, put your website. Oh, thank you. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have? Are you uh, Facebook or any other things yeah, like that? Yeah, all over the place. Uh, the chiropractic source mm. on Facebook. Robert will post all this. Yeah, I'm gonna put that. Okay. All right. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> um. Yeah. So I'll put uh, I'll put this up here for. Uh, pages, you know, you, uh, Facebook keeps, they change the whole left sidebar and you can't find anything now. Okay. I got it. So I'm going to post that in here. So that was good. So, uh, massage. Yeah. I mean, every, everything, um, the acupuncture, massage, chiropractic, uh, you know, natural, uh, living doctors, um, I mean, essential oils, uh, eating well. I mean, all of these things are ways to change your body's function and make right. you healthier. You know, it's not the the vaccines and it's not the medicines and it's not the surgeries that's being promoted so highly. You know, I mean, if you need it, you do it. Right. But it's not what keeps us healthy. And that's that's the message that really needs to put out there is – it's your responsibility. That's that's the bottom line. Yeah, yeah, it's and not, it, it's not the external source. You know, health is from within us, not from an external source coming in. Right, right, and 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 listen, some some things we're genetically predisposed to. There's mm -hmm. no denying that, right? You know, whether it be hair loss or you know or anything like that. But I have to tell you, a couple of years ago, I was hired to videotape a fiftieth high school reunion. Okay. So the people, um, the people on are the people there were, I would say like 68 or so, right. You're 18 when you graduate high school. Mm -hmm. So about 68 to 70 years old, there were people who looked 40 and there were people who looked 90 and were in wheelchairs and had walkers. And then there were other people who were like, you know, looked like they just came from the gym. Now I'm sure some of that, you know, you're predisposed to, but I would have to imagine that a good portion of that was due to how they lived their life. Mm -hmm. 
you know. Well, well, it's I'm I'm glad you said that. I I, I teach a course at uh, one of the universities in the area, and I teach them that about every seven years, our body is brand new. We have new cells. We have new everything else. So your lifestyle is going to either make you develop yourself with better cells every seven years or worse cells every seven years. So the worse your environment is, the worse you're going to age. You know, it's really powerful on uh, to, to understand that. It's so, and, and the way I describe it is kind of like what you were saying. Have you ever, you know, maybe had a high school friend that you went to the 10 or 20 year reunion and within those 10 or 20 years, they look like they aged 40 years. Right. That person, most likely, if you just start having a conversation with them, they may smoke, they may drink a lot, they may ne- may not work out, they may you know eat you know whatever they want, they eat late at night, whatever they're doing. Um, but then on the reverse end, you 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 have somebody uh, that you were in high school with, and you go to the ten or twenty year reunion, and you're like, wow, he looks exactly he or she works ex- looks exactly the same, or even right. better. Well, right. that person probably is living a healthier lifestyle. So right. it, it really is just. You can almost tell who lives a healthy lifestyle versus who doesn't by well, how they look. Or, or right, and just looking at their Facebook page, you know, like I have right now coming up um, uh, is my there's a my fraternity. There's a 50, 50 year anniversary for my chapter at the University of Delaware, Lambda Chi Alpha. Um, so we're going, you know, in December. A couple of friends of mine and and all and. You know, so I've been spending a lot of time on the Facebook page of, of the chapter and looking at and you see, you know, there's a lot of guys that are, you know, obviously out of shape. OK, you know, just just by looking at them. And the pictures that are posted are of they're at the tailgate party, you know, with beers in their hands and, you know, they're you know, they're at restaurants, you know, the sports pub and the wings and, the you know, the big burger, you know. It's obvious that they're, you know, they may not be living a lifestyle that is conducive to good health, you know. And then you look at them, and and it's, you know, it's obvious that, you know, they're not, they're not posting pictures of them just finishing running the New York Marathon. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, you know, so you kind of, you know, you yeah. see what, exactly. you know, what kind of lifestyle is is being lived, mm-hmm. you know. And certainly, you know, I'm I'm guilty of that myself, but you know have taken it, you know, a, a, a big giant step in getting my life and my health on track, you know, seeing you guys regularly now getting the proper nutrition and, and listening to you and taking supplements. I take vitamin D every day. In addition to my, my supplements, I don't, I don't do the, the omega threes like you, like you tell me, um, but one. The next but step. It, with my good nutrition and 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 you know I feel I, I feel great I feel really great you know and uh, you know and and all done without anything invasive you know I haven't had any surgeries you know my hip for the most part is is much better uh, I'm not in continuous pain like I was a big part of that is is chiropractic and and you know, not only adjustments, but you guys stretch me and roll me and, and pull and tug and make, you know, make me make all these kinds of sounds that, you know, shouldn't be coming from a 53 year old, but nonetheless, it's all for my own good. Um, and it's really made, and even people in my own family, my, my mother, you know, she doesn't watch any of this, so I could talk freely about her. Um, you know, she would choose surgery over, you know, a holistic approach. And I've begged her, you know, she has back problems. She has, she's already had a hip replacement, um, you know, but she would rather have an injection into her knee or her, or, or back or whatever, than spend the, the four to six weeks it might take mm-hmm. of regular chiropractic to start saying, Hey, you know what? I'm much better than I was, yeah. you know? But if you don't give it a chance. And that shows the difference between um, the more elder community and the the newer up and coming generations. I think the newer generations are more uh, willing to do something more natural. 
I think the medical doctors were like the word of the Lord, you know, to the community, you know, the, the elder community, you know, whatever their doctor to, I mean, I could think about my grandmother that, you know, used her doctor as basically whatever he said was like yeah. exactly what you need to do. And that's great. You know, th th that's a mentor that they needed in their life to get them through whatever they did, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that was the best choice. You know, they could take another route. So sometimes it, the hardest uh, demographic to change their mindset is the geriatric population, you know, and that's really just because they've lived 50, 60 years of their life knowing that the doctor that they've been living with, you know, for 30 years in their life is, is, is they, it's like almost like how could they be wrong? Like it's, right. it's like not validating to them. You know, wait, wait. So the past fifty years of my life, I haven't been told the right stuff. Like it's hard for them to grasp. Right. And I think the newer generations are starting to say, "Well, I don't want that stuff. I want to do something more natural." So it's the good thing is, is it's going in a better direction. I don't know if it's ever going to get in the direction that I would like to see it at, where like a chiropractor is number one, and then you know, medical community is more for aggressive problems. But right. you know, we'll see in due time. Hopefully, I yeah, can get you know, information out there. Well, you're certainly giving it, you know, a, a good try at, at uh, letting people know. But we've got actually a question, mm -hmm. um, actually from an old friend of mine, uh, Ed Wardiga. Mm -hmm. um, hey, Ed. Um, uh, does li the lifestyle and diet changes reduce the instance of all types of cancer, um, internal versus, uh, you know, melanoma or, or, or skin cancer or something like that? Well, you got to think of your exposure to toxins. So uh, changing your diet is going to change the terrain in our body, which is going to make us healthier, which would help us fight sickness and disease better. So I want to say, yes, it's going to help with most cancers. But as far as like a melanoma and stuff like that, obviously there's a component of uh, sun exposure, you know, or damaging of the skin from that. So there is that aspect as well. And, and when you talk about your environment, we have an external environment and we have an internal environment. So you want to balance both of those. You know, sometimes our external environment we can't control, you know, pollution and, and stuff like that, but our internal environment we definitely can. So out of those two, you definitely want to make sure the thing that you have the most control over that you balance that out, which which lifestyle and dietary changes would be great for that. So right. that's how I would answer that. Um, am I saying that it's going to attack a specific cancer, like changing your diet is going to say you're not going to get prostate cancer. I'm, I would never say that, but changing your diet, changing your lifestyle, changing the terrain in your body is going to allow your immune system in your body to fight whatever it is that's stressing you. Right, right. And, and, and starving the cancer cells of what it needs to, to grow, Survive. right? Yeah. I mean, you know, if you can't, if the cancer cells can't live, if you create a toxic environment for the cancer cells, mm -hmm. that's really what, you know, you want to exactly. reverse, you know, what, yeah, what so, you're doing. You don't want to hurt the good cells. You want to hurt the bad cells. So like I said, we're the opposite of the cancer cells. So we like oxygen. What happens when you take oxygen away from the brain? It dies. Yeah. You're going to either get a stroke or die. Mm -hmm. So if we take, a, if we put oxygen in their environment that they don't want, well, now they can't survive. Right. So it's a totally different way of looking at it. Well, we have a terrain inside of us that's attracting them. Well, now we have to change that to terrain to destroy them. Right. Right. And and you can. And it's, you know, it's it's really never too late, mm -hmm. you know, to, to improve uh, your health and certainly to be able to improve your health without drugs, mm -hmm. without surgeries, uh, without you know, things that are, are invasive and we have to look to what has worked for some segments of, of the world's population for thousands of years um, with great success. You know, uh, acupuncture was mentioned. Um, you know, these things have existed for generations um, and people have gotten um, you know, wonderful success, uh, you know, with things like that. And, you know, why not give it a try? You know, you've got really nothing to lose, you know, very rarely, if ever, right. Have you had, you know, 
you don't hear of stories of people going for chiropractic and you know suddenly everything gets worse suddenly they're getting sick from you know mm-hmm. from going to chiropractic it's you, you know it's it, it's always the complete opposite of that it's always yeah. you know i feel so much better you know that's yeah. that's the know. norm yeah. i mean obviously you're going to have your your select few that might not have that but uh, it all boils down you know in everything in life is your mindset you know some yeah. people become victim to their quote unquote disorder. Mm-hmm. And then now it's like, oh, I have cancer. So now all of a sudden any uh, any hope that they had for survival has been shot down because they start to become victim to that. And right. really the biggest thing is changing your mindset and be like, okay, so I have to realize that I have a symptom right now, heart disease. I have a symptom of, of uh, uh, cancer. I have a symptom of diabetes because they are symptoms. Unfortunately, most people don't know that, but they're symptoms. So I have to change my lifestyle so that symptom no longer is there. And that's that, that it, it takes responsibility and work, but it's possible if you change that mindset and say, I have control, not that disease. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it's really how people need to, to be looking at it, you know, but um, yeah, this was really great. Uh, information. I can't believe we've gone almost an hour yeah, I uh, you now. Sure. Appreciate um, <laughs> appreciate uh, those of you who uh, who around. chimed in um, with us. Um, it was great. Thank you, Stephanie, for for popping in there, getting out of your comfort zone a little bit, um, <laughs> and hopefully you'll uh, you'll follow uh, both uh, Dr. Marco and myself and get notified. Uh, when we go live again, Ed, thank you for, uh, for dropping in. I uh, hope you're doing good. Uh, it's been a while. This is one of my, uh, uh, video colleagues from, uh, from many years ago. We go way back. Great. So thank um, you for joining. Yeah. Glad you popped in. Uh, anything, uh, before we wrap it up, Dr. Marco, I know you've got a, you've got, uh, patients to see this afternoon. Absolutely. Um, no, I, I, you know, I, I appreciate everybody's participation and, and interest and, you know, share this information with people, you know, and if they could obviously follow us on Twitter, they could like us on Facebook, they could like, they could subscribe to our YouTube channel. I mean, it, we're all over the place because this, it, like, you know, like Stephanie said, this is something that needs to be put out there on all different avenues. So yeah. as your coach said, you know, it's smart to bring it out to the masses, and that's what we're trying to do. Yep, great. Okay, well, uh, thanks very much, uh, Dr. Marco, and uh, appreciate this. And we'll we're gonna try and schedule these uh, on a regular basis, mm-hmm. um, and uh, bring you know more great information and and discussion um, to those of you who uh, who want this information. So excellent. Thanks very much. All right. Um, Okay, so Dr. Marco, you can go ahead and end the recording if you want to do that.